And for today's trick, we're going to be putting most of this stuff inside of this mini ITX case. Most of it, not all of it. So, yeah, don't go nowhere. We're going to put this together. Yeah. So we did a review on this case right here, the Inwin A1 Mini. This was a revision. They had updated like the key charger, I believe it's called. They updated the power supply to a, a extra 50 watts and made it gold uh, rated. They also added a couple of fans. So basically this is a revision of the first one that came out a few years ago. Like I said in the intro, we're gonna take most of this stuff and cram it into this little case. This is the ARS B450 Pro Wi-Fi. This one comes in a 550 and an X570. Now, if you go on Amazon, you might be able to find the X570 for the similar price right now as this B450. Now, the good thing about this B450 is this is the second revision on this one, but it's Gen 3 desktop ready. So basically, it will not need a BIOS update for Ryzen 3000. So if you're going 3600, uh, 3700, 3800, put it in the socket and you're off to the races. So we wanna start with our panels. As you can see, we have some wires coming out of here. So this is for our power supply. Some mini ATX builds, especially ones like this, will come with a pre-installed power supply. Now we already did a review on this case. If you did not see that review, you could find it on, find it on the channel. Let's get our fans situated and then we'll get to the motherboard. And do not forget that the cage side here, these right here, would be air coming through here. So we wanted this to draw in the air from the bottom up. We're gonna place them like this, but pay attention to your wires too. Which way would they be going? Where are they gonna be coming out from? So let's handle our first fan. So let's just get our wires nice and situated. So they're gonna come out through this little gap here. But there's a channel right here. That's where they're gonna come through. Yeah, there's a lot of channels, so make sure everything's running through a channel or else you're gonna have problems. All right, this is why I said we wanna do fans and things first. This way we're uh, not doing this, flipping and flopping with everything in the computer. Now let's take a look at what we accomplished. So this little channel down here, right in here, is where we brought our fan cables up at, making sure nothing's coming up through here. But as you can tell now here, this hole is where we're gonna run these through. So let's do that now. Let's get everything out of the way because we're gonna have to put our motherboard in here. You can remove this case right here that covers up the power supply. So now it's time to get to the motherboard. This is where it turns into a regular build at this point. So here's our motherboard. Now let's put our motherboard down and back on its box. Let's get our CPU out. This is our rate spire cooler, which will fit in this case. There's no height clearance issue whatsoever. But here's our CPU. You grab it from the sides. There is another way to make sure the CPU goes in the socket properly. So what we're gonna do first is pick up this lever right there, see that lever? You want it all the way up. Now, right here on this right here, it'll say socket AM4, this way. So let's put the Ryzen letters the same way. So that way they would read perfectly up and down. Ah, fell right in. Now, you could do the diamond, the diamond, but really and truly, they don't even fill in the diamond on a lot of motherboards anymore. So, put it in there, give it a little jiggle jiggle. Don't put pressure down. We're gonna clean this off with alcohol because we touched it with our finger. And then we're gonna bring the arm down. Now, right when you start to get right about here, you're gonna feel tension. Tension's gonna get more and more, and you're gonna be scared here. Don't be, keep going with that pressure. All the way down till it locks underneath that little lock, and now she won't go anywhere. 
So for your M.2, you're gonna need a smaller bit. So let's take this bit off. We're gonna get a really tiny, tiny, tiny little guy. And we are going to open it. And yours will have a peel that you take this off. Our boot device is a SSD M.2 NVMe Gen 3 PCIe. So you would look here to see where your M.2 would go. Those are the keys right there. That's the part that's gonna go in. But you can see that it has that slit in there right there. So they won't go in either way. You can only go in one way even with those. If you pay attention and look real good at the slit over here, you will see that there's a black line over here. So that's empty for these. You wouldn't go in like this or perfectly straight. You wanna take it in at an angle. So that's what we're going to do. Take it in at an angle. Push it in like so. Make sure it's all the way in. If it doesn't go in very easily, then you probably got it the wrong way. So this has its own slot at the top. We're just gonna put that in at a 45 degree angle and bring that down on top. And now that you have that, we're going to take this, put our screw on our screwdriver. So before going any further, let's push this to the side over here. Let's get our IO shield. Let's get our case. So if you're like, well, Joe, which way does it go? Does it go up and down? Does it go this way? See the words there? See how it says Wi-Fi and you can read it? If it was like this, you'd be putting it in wrong. You would want to go aligned with the letters to make sure you could read them straight up and down. Or you could grab your motherboard like so. So you could look at the back and go, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. It goes like that. So that's another route. Now, if you pay attention to the IO shield, it's rounded here with the lip out. So we'd want to put it in from inside the case and done. So let's do that. And done. You just installed your IO shield. Now let's take the case, move it out of the way again because that's done. Now, if this is your first time building in a mini ITX build, I really suggest to you that you use the original stock cooler or some type of tower style cooler because then you're done. You know, you connect all this to the motherboard before and then you just slide this down with the motherboard. We are putting this tower style cooler on here. This should fit no issues whatsoever. I never used this one before. So it says it has a 200 watt TDP and it's for all those sockets right there. If you're interested here, I'll put a link in the description, of course. So it uses all these, whatever. Don't pay attention to the price. I have a pretty cool place I buy things at. They're just missing parts at times and I have so many extra parts. What you do now is get uh, ready to install your cooling solution. I'm going to record me re uh, putting this one on my motherboard. So if you're doing something similar, you can follow along. So first thing we want to do, remove this. Removing this is as easy as just taking off these screws. Be aware your back plate may fall right off. Put these things in the box. The motherboard's box that way you know where they're at now what you would want to do is apply your thermal compound to your cpu some of these guys come with thermal compound uh, you may have purchased it so what we're going to do now is clean this off because we touched it a lot So for those of you who are upset that I used the thermal paste applicator and you think that that's crazy, well, send all your hate mail to this email right here. And for those of you who are new, the reason why people hate that is because everybody has their reasons. Can't tell you. As long as you put thermal paste, it covers the IHS, you're done. So now what you want to do is you're going to want to give it a little move around. You know what I mean? Move it around. On, we're, we're spreading the thermal compound on the bottom everywhere. Put a little bit of pressure and squeeze, squawk, squeeze, done. Yeah. 
with our fan now on here and we're going with a pull config pulling air through here so now that this is uh, on here now we can start the fun parts installing all the wires onto the motherboard before we put the motherboard in because that's pretty much the only way you could do this once it's in the case it's really hard to get down in there to get to these little things so have your motherboard manual ready and get to the page that tells you where everything's at on your motherboard and now we could start connecting things so let's clear up our space and get that going let's take our front panel connector like this find the way it goes in and plug it in because once it's in there you really can't get too much so i try to get as much in wires as i can before i put it in the case Now look, see how short it is too here? So we might have to do this one later, but it's nice and big and at the bottom right, and we can nail that as long as we don't put our graphics card in first. Feed the wires through grommets, whatever you can. This is just the wires that are at the top, mostly in areas that you can't get to once you shut this down. So once this goes into the case, you can't reach these top areas of the motherboard. If you could get to these areas here with your hands, then you're golden. Let's get our 24 pin in, because this would actually be very tough to do. So we're gonna go in at an angle. Let's actually make sure nothing is behind the motherboard wire-wise. Let's make sure we clear this. As long as nothing's in the back of your motherboard, and the uh, motherboard tray where it actually bolts into. Get your screws in because this is gonna prove to be very fun. Because getting to the screw from the motherboard in the top left corner, you gotta go through this hole right here. So you're gonna need an extension. Once that's through, we bolt it down. We're gonna put those wires in that we couldn't. Now we got our motherboard screws in and I'm not gonna tell you if I did the top left. I'm gonna keep that one to myself. Hope that's not obvious. And now we're gonna do the ones that we said we're going to do. They ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of sounds. More when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. My name came up a lot of sounds. More when I was not around. Certain people that I know, they ain't no longer about. Know that the ride or die, I keep boys by my seat. Boy. Know that the ride or die, I keep boys by my seat. Oh, boy. Day we hustle, but the night we. Oh, boy. Know that the ride or die. Yeah. I hope somebody out there got some help out of this. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget. Everything you saw in this video and every other video, links down in the bottom. Again, you are not charged for using those links. They are Amazon affiliate links. If you liked the video, give us a like. If you disliked it, just remember down in the comments, let me know why you disliked the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Late.